started talking about ELA mass spec and molecular ions, I gave you methane and I said this is in some ways the hardest one to think about as a molecular ion because you have to put the, have to take an electron out of the signal framework. And the molecule is very hot because it just received a good hard whack from an electron and its bonds are weakened. So it's prone to fragmentation and the fragments are subject to fragmentation again. So if we have an alkyl bond, I'll call it R, R prime, and of course it's a molecular ion, it's a radical cation, we're talking EI mass spec, not CI, or electrospray, or Maldi, or any of the other uh, soft ionization techniques, we can fragment to a cation and to a radical. I will point out to you again, don't lose sight of the fact that it is the charge species that you're always looking at in mass spectrometry, not the neutral species. There's a preference for small r plus. I write this as And that's often because of fragmentation and subsequent fragmentation. So typically the biggest peak you'll see will be a propyl cation C3H7 plus at, uh, at 43 or perhaps a butyl at C4H9 plus at 57. And in part this is because even if you have a big molecule, the carbocation can then fragment again spinning out alkenes and blowing off energy to form smaller fragments. So I'll say a preference for small r plus, e.g. C3, C4. The general formula, of course, in alkanes is CnH2n plus 1, because we're at the carbocation, right now, alkane is CnH2n plus 2. We take away a proton to get the carbocation, or you take away one hydrogen to get the carbocation in terms of the formula. There is a preference for secondary and tertiary. Just like in solution phase chemistry, but that preference isn't absolutely carved in stone because, again, your molecules are very hot in the gas phase. They have a lot of energy to overcome barriers. So I want to put up the spectrum here. And it's the first one in the handout. Spectrum of dodecene. so 
by delocalization over the carbocation. So by the time you get down to an ethylene carbocation, it really is very unstable. Plus, you get further rearrangements. These molecules are very hot. So chances are what we're seeing at 43 is not necessarily an n probal but actually an isopropyl carbocation. In other words, you may initially form a propyl cation and then with concurrent 1,2 hydride shift, uh, either concurrent or, or sequential, get an isopropyl carbocation. Anyway, so moving up, these numbers are sort of worth, worth recognizing. C4, H9, and of course we see them all right over here, is 57. C5, H10, uh, C5, H11, rather, is 71. C6, H13, is 85, and so forth. Then, of course, these are basically spelled out for us in this archetype of the purple pattern. As I said, you do get subsequent fragmentation, which is one of the reasons why we're not, say, just getting a hexyl peak as the biggest peak or, or other peaks. Basically, you will keep splitting and spitting out energy. But the main point to keep in mind is the radicals going away. As you're then breaking your carbocation, you can lose an alkene. So, for example, just in terms of curved arrows, if we have a long-chain alkyl carbocation, and we're going to draw in our, our hydrogens just to, just to help us keep track here, if by my curved arrow I represent a two-electron process with loss of ethylene, then we knock down our carbocation by two and spend out some energy. Now, as I said, branching gives rise, or secondary carbocations tend to be favored. So branching gives rise to secondary carbocation. So here we see an isomer of dodecane. We see 4-methyl undecane. And in 4-methyl undecane, you'll notice you get a slight enhancement instead of seeing the 127. Uh, falling on this envelope, we see it slightly enhanced. We also see slightly enhanced our peak at 71 and our peak at 43. All of these are possibilities for giving us a more stable carbocation. And you'll notice comparatively our peak at 57. Now the other thing that ends up being diminished in this spectrum is the molecular ion. In other words, now your molecular ion is absent as you open up more and more fragmentation pathways, you have less and less stability of the molecular ion. And so if you're looking at this from the reverse point of view and trying to solve the structure, you're saying, my goodness, What's going on? What's the weight of this compound? This is a big problem. By the time we get to some really easy carbocation pathways, right, everybody loves a terbutyl carbocation. This, by the time we get to really easy carbocation pathways in this highly branched dodecane isomer, now you go ahead, you don't see the molecular ion at all, and you see a great big So that's what I want to say about alkanes, and of course you'll see some of this fragmentation in compounds containing alkyl groups, although often the fragmentation will be focused around the heteroatom. Yeah. What are the peaks, um, the smaller peaks below? Just one below? Yeah, like one or two below. One or two below is typically further loss of a hydrogen atom or a hydrogen molecule or molecule of H2. So like twice? Well, I mean, if you're losing two, it'll probably be a hydrogen molecule, basically spitting out H2. If you're, if you're cleaving, if you're having uh, one loss, the loss of one, you'll be losing a hydrogen atom. When we 
started to introduce mass spec, I said that alkenes are easier to conceptualize. So at least with alkenes, right, that was alkanes up there, at least with alkenes we can say we can envision taking an electron out of the pi system when we give the molecule good hard rack with an electron. And so remember, that's going to give rise to a radical cation. We've got to make do with an odd number of electrons. That gives a very funny looking structure. And we can write two resonance structures. For those of you who are used to pushing electrons two at a time, it's often hard to say how do we get from one, one resonance structure to the other resonance structure. But if you think back to general chemistry writing resonance structures for molecules like NO, you were constrained by the idea of moving two electrons in pairs with curved arrows. And you figure, OK, just pick up the electron and put it somewhere else. All right. Now, alkenes, you would think then you should have some very simple cleavage pathways. And you would think you'd be able to see where the double bond is in the molecule. You can't, because this is a very hot carbocation, and it undergoes lots and lots of rearrangement. So the carbocation walks all over the molecule. The fragmentation process is kind of similar. And by that, I mean if now I've expanded my resonance structure like so to show a chain, you can get a homolytic cleavage pathway. And this is a standard radical reaction. Radicals add to double bonds. And this is the mechanistic reverse of a radical adding to a double bond. We just draw a fish hook and a fish hook and a fish hook going back to R. That gives rise to an allylic carbocation, and I'll say minus R dot. And so let me put up the spectrum of dodecene in comparison to dodecane. And so in the spectrum of one dodecene, we see the base peak. Base peak means the biggest peak at 41, so two less than the propyl, 41 just corresponds to the allyl carbocation. And as I said, the reason that's not the only peak that we see is because the alkene walks all over the molecule. I'm not going to push arrows right now, but you can imagine, I will just start you on the process. If you want, you can expand upon it in your mind on your own. So the first step in the process of rearrangement is a 1-2 hydride shift, which puts your positive charge over here. Now realize that by resonance, you can have your positive charge here or also here. Remember, that's your back to your freshman chemistry. Just pick up the electron, move it to the other position. Then you can end up with another 1-2 hydride shift, and that moves your alkene, the radical cation, over here. So you can walk it all over the molecule, and it does indeed walk. So that means that you're not able to see where the alkene I think that's what I want to say about alkanes and alkenes. Is there any, are any questions at this point? So, I don't know if you thought it was meaning by just moving the electron over. All right. What I, what I mean, let me, let me just go through this. That's fine. All right. So, and it helps to keep track of your hydrogen. So, in other words, I can write this structure here as the product of a 1-2 hydride shift. And now you'd say, well, wait a second, we have a radical here. But no, you don't have a radical here. You have half a cation here, half a cation here. You can't do that with the two arrow, with the curved arrow tools of organic chemistry. But if you just think back to freshman chemistry, you have no problems. This is what you learn when you learn how to write resonance structures for the first time. You have no problem saying, oh yeah, this is another resonance structure.
then you do another one two hydride shift over here, and that's walked your center of positive charge over. And of course, this is just occurring all over the molecule, plus various types of alkyl shifts to give rise to more stable branch structures. All right, I want to show you three pathways in heteroatom containing compounds, and those pathways are going to take us pretty far in terms of understanding what's going on. They're also sort of cool.
it's a radical cation on Y. Y is a leaving group. The leaving group can leave with its pair of electrons. And now if we write a curved arrow mechanism, if the leaving group takes its pair of electrons, that's going to give us R plus, and it's going to give us Y H with a long pair. I, I, I'm just going to give us, I'm sorry, Y with a long pair on Y. I'm getting ahead of myself. Now these are very hot radicals. The abstraction occurs largely without regard to ring size. If you're thinking about thermal reactions at 80 degrees and boiling benzene, sort of typical free radical AIBN type of reaction conditions, you're going to think there's going to be some preference for a five-membered ring or six-membered ring. Here we're going to see four-membered rings with other ring sizes, and we'll see examples. All right, I want you to see how far this very simple set of mechanisms can take us in terms of understanding heteroatom compound cleavage. And so I'm going to start with the first example. It's on your second handout. This is also on the homework, so we're getting a, getting a leg up on homework. Jim, do you have any more of the second handout? Uh, tonight. So here we see hex. 
hexanol. Hexanol has a molecular weight of 102. So the first thing you'll notice in the molecular, in the EI mass spectrum, is that your molecular ion is missing. This is very typical for alcohols. So you have to immediately be thinking, and people who are good at this will look and they'll say, oh, we see this pattern of fragmentation. For example, we see an M minus 1 peak here. So at 101, we see an M minus 1. That's going to be minus H dot. I'll show you how that comes about. We see at 87, another peak. That corresponds to M minus 15. 15 is loss of a methyl group. We see at 84, M minus 18, that's loss of water. We see at 69, M minus 33, that corresponds to M minus 18 minus 15, which corresponds to loss of water and a methyl group. Say methyl radical, just to help us keep very careful track of things. And finally, at 45, that corresponds to M minus 57. That corresponds to loss of a fuel group. Now, what I want to do with this is not look at the spectrum and figure out the structure, nor do I actually want us to immediately be able to look at the losses and say this is corresponding to loss of water, this is corresponding to loss of metal, this is corresponding to fuel. I want to take this in the other direction and see how these very simple principles can take us from the structure to all of these peaks. I think that's really a good place to begin. So let us begin with our homolytic cleavage pathway. corresponds to our 87 peak. And the same principle with loss of the butyl group from the other side, minus 57. And 
so that takes us through three significant peaks in the mass spectrum. Try the hydrogen atom abstraction fragmentation pathway. And we'll just try one example of it. You can try more, more on your own and come up with a couple of other peaks if you like. So I have, and I'll draw things out explicitly just so we don't get confused the first time around. If I imagine the oxygen plucking off a hydrogen atom, I'll do it by way of a five-membered ring, but it doesn't absolutely have to be. With these unusual structures, you start to feel like a sophomore writing resonance structures for the first time, and it's easy to lose track of where your hydrogens are, which is why if you have any propensity to get confused, you should just go ahead and write things out explicitly. Well, this sets us up with a leaving group, water to leave. should be at 
fingertips are not an isobutoxy group, but methyl 15, ethyl 29, propyl 43, 57, 61, etc. Those should be at your fingertips. 14 should be at your fingertips for a methylene group when we made that comparison there. 18 for water, but not 73. As I said, I'd much rather go through these types of forward-thinking mechanisms at this point in the game than in the reverse-thinking mechanisms, so let's do it. All right, our heterolytic cleavage path, or our homolytic cleavage pathway can be applied here. That gives us loss of an isopropyl group. That gives us um, our minus 43. structure then of our peak at 87. Our heterolytic cleavage pathway gives rise to the base peak, the biggest peak in the spectrum.
reaction very much like a Diels Alder reaction. It is in the forward direction a cycloaddition reaction, but instead of being a 4 pi plus 2 pi cycloaddition like the Diels Alder reactions, the 4, car, the four component has pi and sigma in it. So if we push our curved arrows like so. Carbonyl compounds, I mean the whole family. Ketones, aldehydes, esters, amides, etc. So, you still have the homolytic cleavage pathway. So, some ketone or some aldehyde, like so, we still will think of our odd electron as being on oxygen. And you can have a homolytic cleavage pathway in which one of your R groups cleaves off as a radical. That gives rise to an acillium ion. Another reaction that occurs with carbonyl compounds is the McClafferty rearrangement. Some textbooks will write this with fish hooks flying everywhere. I far prefer to think of it as a simple paracyclic process, another charge accelerated retroene reaction. My, my preferred way of writing this reaction is simply push your electrons, push your electrons, push your electrons, like so. You will find 
find if you write the traditional fish hook mechanism that the product you get is identical to this product. It is merely a resonance structure with the odd electron on this carbon over here. But personally, I prefer this mechanism. All right, let me show you this, and that will, that plus your heterolytic cleavage and your abstraction fragmentation mechanisms will set you up on your own to handle esters and image. Just remember the lone pair, you can take electrons off either the carbonyl or the nitrogen. So here is hexanone, and you'll notice we have a spectra, a peak at 100, which is your molecular ion, a peak at 85, which is M minus 15, which is loss of a methyl, a peak at 71, which corresponds to M minus 29, which is loss of an ethyl. We also have a peak at 58, that's M minus um, 42, that's our McLafferty rearrangement, C3H6 is getting lost here, and then we have our base peak at 43, which is M minus 57, which is loss of a butyl. Let me just show you a couple of a couple of these processes. We won't go through every one. Here's our homolytic cleavage pathway. We can lose either our butyl group or we can lose a methyl group. I will just show you one of them. This is loss of CH3 dot gives rise to an acillium ion. That acillium ion is at 85. You can also lose CO. There are two pathways that are going to correspond to our peak at 57. But if you lose CO, that's minus another 28. And that gives rise to a butyl cation. You can do the other one where we lose, we lose the butyl. Loss of the butyl gives rise to, uh, to this guy over here. All right, let me show you very quickly your McLafferty pathway. And again, I'll just put the odd electron out of the way. Push our electrons in a ring in a paracyclic reaction, charge accelerated retroene reaction. That's going to give rise to loss of propene. That's minus 42. show you just lay the groundwork for our loss of 29 given extraction fragmentation pathway. So if you picture the radical, as I said, very indiscriminate, plucking off this hydrogen. now have all the tools at your disposal to finish up the ester and the amide and to attack the other problems. And I guess I will see you, I think Monday is a holiday, so I will see you on Tuesday.